Imagine a waterway so critical, so essential, that it has the power to reshape entire economies. But what if I told you that one country, Canada, ended up footing the bill for it, despite it serving another nation's economic interests? That's right. Today we're diving into the fascinating story of why Canada paid for America's most important canal, the mighty St. Lawrence. Lawrence Seaway, an engineering project that transformed North America's trade routes forever. Stay tuned as we explore the untold history and unexpected twists behind this colossal infrastructure. Welcome back to History Decoded Channel, where we uncover the most remarkable stories in mega infrastructure. Today, we're tackling one of the most intriguing historical oddities, how and why Canada became the primary financier of America's gateway to the world, a decision that would stir debates for generations. The St. Lawrence Seaway, stretching from the Atlantic Ocean to the Great Lakes, is more than just a canal. It's a lifeline that links global markets to the heart of North America. But why was this waterway so crucial? For centuries, the Great Lakes were isolated from the rest of the world, and the existing trade routes, such as the Erie Canal, weren't enough to handle the growing demands of international shipping. By the mid-20th century, the US and Canada realized they were missing out on a critical economic opportunity. Larger ships with bigger cargo loads were emerging, and the existing routes simply couldn't keep up. The solution? A vast canal system that could accommodate these behemoths. But that's where things get interesting. Canada, not the US, would be footing the majority of the bill. Why would Canada, a country with its own financial concerns, agree to take on such a massive project for its neighbor? It all started with a strategic realization. The US, still reeling from the effects of the Great Depression, was hesitant to spend millions on infrastructure Yet Canada saw the potential to open up new trade routes, increase its own economic influence, and secure critical hydroelectric power. In the 1940s, after years of back-and-forth negotiations, Canada's Prime Minister at the time made the bold decision to move forward. And, to make matters even more interesting, it was the Americans who'd benefit the most. Canada's primary interest? Access to iron ore and trade advantages, which would fuel its own industries and solidify its place on the world economic map. But the road to constructing the St. Lawrence Seaway wasn't easy. This wasn't a simple canal project. This was a mega undertaking that would span thousands of miles and reshape the geography of North America. Over 22,000 workers were employed, moving millions of tons of rock and earth, while designing 15 lock systems to allow for the passage of massive ships. However, the engineering was only part of the challenge. The project came with enormous environmental and social costs. Entire villages were submerged to make way for the canal, leaving thousands of residents displaced. The creation of the Moses Saunders Power Dam, a critical part of the seaway, flooded these communities forever. By the time the seaway officially opened in 1959, it became the backbone of North America's trade infrastructure. But while Canada had paid for most of the construction, the canal's success was heavily dependent on American industries. The seaway boosted the transportation of raw materials like iron ore, coal, and grain, directly benefiting U.S. manufacturing, especially steel production. But this wasn't a one-sided deal. It was a game-changer for both countries. However, despite its success, the canal's importance began to dwindle as the decades passed. Changing global trade routes and new technological advancements in shipping meant that the seaway no longer held the same strategic importance it once did. But even today, it still plays a role in niche industries, just not in the way anyone originally imagined. So, why did Canada choose to finance America's most important canal? The answer lies in the changing tides of history. By putting up the money, Canada secured its own place as a global trade power, gaining access to vital resources and future opportunities. But more importantly, the St. Lawrence Seaway teaches us a crucial lesson about the interconnectedness of nations. Sometimes, what seems like an altruistic move can turn into a power play, one that forever alters the economic landscape of two countries. While it may seem strange for Canada to have shouldered the majority of the cost, the Seaway ultimately turned out to be a win for both countries even if the benefits were not as evenly distributed as originally anticipated. So, while the St. Lawrence Seaway may no longer be the beating heart of global trade, its legacy remains a testament to what can happen when two nations come together to overcome massive challenges. And, 
let's not forget. It was Canada's willingness to invest in this monumental project that paved the way for America's economic rise in the post Yubur era. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this deep dive into mega infrastructure, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And leave a comment. What do you think about Canada's massive investment? Was it a stroke of genius or a costly mistake? Let me know your thoughts below. See you in the next video.